All right, hi everyone. We are recording live on stream right now. We just watched the campfire chat for season four. There was a lot of juicy new details in there that I want to try to go through as fast as possible to give you the update. Uh, this assumes that you already know what's kind of going on in season four with the itemization changes, the crafting, the new bosses and so on. So I'm not gonna detail every little thing now. Just kind of like what are the important takeaways for people that have already seen it. If you wanna see some of the other um, summaries, I have a bunch of videos. Uh, you can also check it on Maxwell and so on. But there was a lot of interesting new stuff here and the patch notes have also just dropped that are pretty long that I will go through separately in like a full video as well. But I took a few of the highlights and also packed them into my notes here. So let's go. So number one, uh, the season theme. So a lot of people were kind of wondering what's going on there. And indeed we are getting like a very, very small theme, which is basically a season two round two edition. So the season theme is going to be Iron Wall's reputation system. We have a screenshot of that actually somewhere. Uh, let me show this. So this looks like this. It's basically a copy paste from season two with the vampire bounty board or something. And you get a ton of like tempering manuals and items, uh, aspects, uniques even, and at the end, even some uh, resplendent spark. So you get a resplendent spark from this. You get one from Uber Lilith and you get one from the first Tormented and Boss that you kill. So you get three total. You have almost your first Uber unique just from kind of like playing the game. And uh, then you just need to find one more, salvage one, and you can um, like craft all that you want basically. So that's kind of cool. But yeah, overall, the season theme is very small. You don't get a power buff like usual, no more power. And they just say that um, instead it's going to like juice up your leveling journey. So uh, these rewards here are mostly just like big leveling items or so. Likewise, uh, while we added, the season journey itself is also giving you more stuff compared to before, it seems like more materials, uh, specific items. So we actually have a bit of like um, similar to like Hades Gift, I guess, uh, kind of like a combo between legendaries, it sounded like that uh, apply to different classes here. So Dust Devil stuff for Barbs, Polarize stuff, Minion stuff, Barrage and Incinerate. So this is kind of what you can um, expect to get for free, so to say, from just playing through the season journey. But then you can, of course, go to whatever build you want to do. Now, one important change that they're making here is Armor. So we have this here. Armor cap is now 9,230, which is the cap against level 100 monsters. If you didn't know before, uh, the Armor cap was 1,300... Uh, 13,300 for tier 100 nightmare dungeons in the past so way higher than this and in the pit it was actually 16,400 or something and uh, that is now way lower you only need 9.2k so uh, especially bobs can get that very easily rogues as well and in general you don't have to go for like a juggernaut aspect now you can definitely make setups without it and it's way easier to get the armor cap so that's kind of cool um, there are some other stat caps here. Cooldown reduction is now 75 capped. Um, mostly applies to when you have a challenging shrine, I guess. And area increases are capped at 100%. So um, you don't have like a frost node that goes to off screen. You don't have a corpse terminal that pulls stuff from like two screens away. Uh, yeah, it's probably pretty reasonable. 100% extra is still pretty large though because uh, it's not actually area size. The way this works in this game is a, a squared value. Uh, because it's actually radius that increases with those affixes and they seem not to have changed those calculations. So 100% extra area size from the affixes is actually quadruple area size. So that's kind of big as well. So Frost Noahs are still going to be kind of large, Cop Centers are still going to be kind of large, but not ridiculous. What this also means is it's kind of like a nerf to barbs with the Dust Devils because they were scaling off their size and there's also other nerfs to Dust Devils. So they're not going to be like that crazy OP anymore. So speaking about those here, um, Dust Devils, there are various tweaks to them. You spawn fewer of them now and they are smaller and they don't do that much damage. And uh, we have like some comparison here as well. Um, so here's like the PTR versus the live season four. Um, it's just like way fewer and they're not that big and they, like, they move faster and disappear faster. There's also a global cap of 15 now that it can spawn at once. So if you do like the triple shout action, for example, you already have a cap pretty much. So um, yeah, in general, Barbs are not that crazy with the Dust Devils, but it will probably still be worth it to use them, and Barbs will remain really powerful. Probably or the, sec the best or the second best class, I would say. So just for my initial impressions. Uh, some other interesting stuff here. Fortify is now 15% DR, so I guess that's a buff, buff here. Druid Wolves, 200% extra HP. Also uh, spawn 100% faster after death. So Wolves are actually kind of a thing now. They are pretty powerful. 
they just had an issue that they're just constantly dying all the time, so that should be much better. Uh, Scoundrel's Kiss is also getting changed, we have that here, so for Rogue Enjoyers, you can now play ranged Rapid Fire, and they did mention that it also now works with Ricochet, for example, from the aspect, which on the PTR it did not. And in this clip they showed us it also was not doing that, maybe they didn't have it, or maybe that was a mistake, uh, I don't really trust it. But either way, you can play a ranged Rapid Fire still, and don't have to go hug monsters. And Mental Surge is getting obliterated, it seems like. Uh, we have we saw one recipe, they didn't give us the numbers here exactly, but uh, we saw this recipe and it went from 16k to 1k on the rare recipe. We haven't seen a legendary one, but that was a pretty heavy nerf and I expect something similar for the higher version as well. So that means it's pretty much dead and uh, that's a good thing in my book. Uh, more in patch notes, uh, so we have some other stuff down here that I just found in the patch notes. Let's go through that real quick. Razor plate looks like an insane buff. Uh, we don't have the numbers, but uh, they gave like a new affix and it has uh, now it's now master workable. And uh, if you play a Fawns build, that might be really powerful, especially because uh, the defensive loss of Razor Plate is not that big anymore compared to last season. Uh, grenades for some reason got nerfed on the Rogue, even though that was kind of like the worst Rogue archetype anyway. Uh, kind of funny. Uh, Hectic gets a minus 50%, that's pretty big, but expected, I guess. Uh, Eminence get more Aures, Rings get more single res, um, Dust Devils I mentioned, Hurricane is getting an interesting buff here. So they have bug fixed the um, infinite damage Hurricane, like this, you know, 20 billion ticks, but the actual Hurricane build, the one that I actually made a video about back on the PTR, uh, is getting a buff by a, like a substantial amount actually. So that's actually going to be a pretty solid build now. So people that like Righteous Fire in uh, PoE or something, uh, that is going to be... Uh, Got to be a pretty nice, smooth build to play. Not necessarily the best, but it's going to be going to be decent. Uh, Mages getting a bit of a nerf, nothing major. Um, so minion necros, mages, and golems in particular are still looking really strong. Uh, we don't know about all of the little bug fixes they have done. For example, it was possible to get like, I don't know what, 20, 25 ranks on this golem passive and stuff. I'm not sure if that is, for example, intended. Or other stuff where... For example, on Druids, they had like a clarity ranks as like a resource mod. So that was probably also unintended. And there were like a bunch of like unintended temporary things that are not specifically mentioned. At least I didn't see anything. But I would expect some stuff like this. Um, tread with caution, at least. 100% uh, Dodge Rogue is dead. Uh, Beastfall Boots Burst is nerfed a lot. Uh, so not so easy to do like a one-shot combo. So I guess something like a pure Pension build is kind of dead with that as well. I was thinking maybe couldn't still do that, but not really. Uh, Tarasha ring maximum four stacks, so you can't abuse like uh, elemental search, for example, to get more. Um, Gauntlet, uh, that's like a little thing that I just saw there. Boss is no longer drop the shrines after revive. Uh, there is a bug fix for Druid Spirit Glyph. I I wasn't aware of this bug, and I guess it has been in the game forever. But uh, Druids basically just get free ten percent damage now if you use that glyph, and a lot of builds do. So this is kind of big. And here also, sneaky sacred items are now level 35 and ancestral items are level 55 minimum requirements. So you can go to the higher world tiers way faster. In general, they're trying to speed up the leveling process. You get more XP now in the higher world tiers. You get a lot of XP in the Helltides. Uh, there's a bunch of extra bonuses basically and this. So leveling to 100 will be even faster than before. And kind of this is where the real journey starts now. So this is really also what they said in like the... Um, the Q&A and stuff, so they, they kind of want to push you towards the 100 faster, it seems, just so you can actually explore the post level 100 content, which there's a lot of now. Okay, let's go back to up here. So we covered the balance and the bug fixes, so Infinite Hurricane is fixed, Evan Pierce are lucky hit, um, and also the Elemental Search combo with that, I guess, is kind of gone, so you just have to play like a normal Blight build now. Uh, Firebolt, Multi-Split, uh, there was a bug where I could uh, split it multiple times by stacking firewalls, that is also fixed. And probably a bunch more stuff there. Uh, okay, some miscellaneous stuff. So white, blue, and yellow items. People are asking about this all the time. They said that they are looking into updating those at some point to give them some other use cases, but nothing yet. Uh, but something that's kind of like separate from what we do with items right now with like imprinting, for example. So we'll see. Uh, there is a lot more salvage and materials now to get. So all of this here is pretty big stuff. You get double from sacreds. You get triple from ancestral when salvaging. Uh, legendaries now give back crystals, which usually was just rares, uh, so you don't have to pick up any rares whatsoever. Um, 
be imprinting cost 16 instead of 75. Um, I think tempering costs have been adjusted, master working costs have been adjusted, so all the stuff kind of got way easier, way less grindy, and so on. So you can do a lot more of the items that you have. You can imprint your stuff, you can change your builds, so it's going to be kind of nice. And a uh, little thing here, you can change your hair in the wardrobe now. And uh, about the greater affixes, we have a screenshot here somewhere. Uh, they changed how the greater affixes look, so here's this little star. So that's kind of cool. So you can see now this has a greater affix, and I guess there will be multiple uh, when you have more, I guess. Uh, this is how it looks on the ground, so I guess also here you're probably going to see like you know multiple stars. And here's also how it looks in the inventory. So it's just like more visible, you can immediately identify that an item has a greater affix. So that's kind of cool. Okay, Helltide changes. Um, that is kind of interesting. So they're basically making Helltide even better, it was already really powerful. And there is this item here, the Profane Mind Cage. So you might not have ever seen that, because I played in PDR for like 15 hours a day, and I did never find this a single time. Uh, so <laughs> it was really rare, and now it drops like candy. And uh, unfortunately it does not stack, but you can use it to get like more cinders and increase the monster power a little bit. And they said that they want to see feedback for this, and I think something like a stackable mechanic would be cool in the future, but we'll see. For now, um, this is something that you can find. Uh, Baneful Hearts have a better bad luck protection. This is the stuff that you need to summon the Blood Maiden, the new Helltide boss. Uh, if you contribute to the Blood Maiden summon, you get more rewards. And uh, in general, she has, just has better loot. It's a pretty long fight most of the time. Uh, some other little changes. Doomsday Chest now just gives the loot. Channel time reduced. Uh, lots of improvement. So Helltide is going to be pretty big and pre pretty rewarding. Okay, Masterworking. Uh, no more animation for rank 1, 2, 3, and 5, 6, 7, and so on. So you can just kind of click it like the blacksmith upgrades right now. And then the fast animation for 4, 8, and 12. And there's no more fail chance. And uh, it just shows which affix got upgraded. So it's like way easier to go for the entire process like over and over if you try to hit like a certain stat. Plus the lower cost will make this much more reliable to actually hit like at least 2 out of 3 or even 3 out of 3 somewhat reliably on the items with the right stats that you want to hit. So that's kind of cool. Uh, they rescaled the pit a little bit, so that is interesting, and we don't know how hard it will be, but health increases uh, much more post-monster level 100, apparently throughout the entire game, so this might apply to Nightmare Dungeons as well. They didn't say how much, and um, I think somewhere else they said in like an interview that the monsters would also scale po uh, like above level 199, so this was not in a, actually in a patch notes that I saw now, or in this campfire chat, but that might happen. So this means that monsters might do more and more damage, that might get very, very tanky, and potentially level 200 pit is unreachable, but we'll see. So for now, um, they've rescaled the mats a little bit, so you have to go a bit higher to get the higher tier mats. So the goal is like at minimum to hit like tier 60 plus, so you can find the, the highest mats basically, and then you can convert them into the lower mats and have like all the master working stuff unlocked. They raise the overall cap, that's kind of cool. And they also give you obols now from just completing pit and nine dungeons above uh, tier 46. So everything level 100 plus monsters basically gives you obols now. They didn't say how much, but I guess it scales up a bit. That's kind of cool. And obols are pretty valuable now, I guess. Uh, attacks are cleared after boss kill. That's cool. Um, party has got a huge buff in the pit now. So previously there was only 100% mats distributed between the party members. Now it's 100% to the opener and free 50% for everyone else. It's kind of big. Uh, so party play, party leeching, and all that stuff is going to be, uh, you know, pretty uh, huge, I guess, um, to just mega farm those mats if you want. And no more artillery blaster blast shrines, so you can't cheese the boss fights, for example. That's kind of a cool change, I like this. Uh, Nightmare Dungeons, you get 25% more Glyph XP. Rune Shards drop more and more in higher dungeons. Rune Shards are what you require for the pit, in case you're not aware. So you can probably just do like one dungeon run and then get a bunch of them and do like a few pit runs or so. Like, we don't really know. But um, apparently on the P on the PTR the the cost was like too low, so there might actually be like downtime between pit runs to some degree, but we'll see. If you can do like the pit in any like real capacity, like sixty plus for example, then you can easily run T one hundred dungeons, and you can probably get like multiple shards pretty fast, and then do a bunch of runs. So it's basically like Nephilim rifts now, and greater rifts in the free <laughs> with the keys. Okay, boss ladder. So that's kind of cool. Um, they are giving us five times the loot for three times the cost now. So those tormented bosses are basically the way to go now. So you have to make your character ready for those as soon as possible and then find the tormented versions because they're just so much more rewarding. They need two stitch and stones that they get from the pit and then the normal materials times three. 
And uh, the same applies for party play, of course. So if you do rotations, then it's pretty impactful. And all bosses now have a chance of uber uniques. And they're also rebalancing some of those. They didn't say exactly how much, but they specifically called out my feedback <laughs> by name uh, in the campfire chat saying that they have rebalanced those bosses. And that means most likely Zia is going to be a lot harder and uh, maybe Kugar as well. And maybe in general, all the bosses might be a bit harder because they were kind of pushovers for good builds. So we'll see exactly what will happen. Um, sorry, guys. But um, yeah, I expect that in general, those two bosses are somewhat more high end now. So it's just, it's just what I would expect here. We'll see. Um, then we have, uh, okay, this is already covered, the Season Journey Legendaries. Uh, something that was not in patch notes that I not, have not seen and that was not mentioned in the campfire chat. So I don't know. But there is basically a kind of like infinite Helltide monster spawn uh, strategy where you just stack up with multiple people in the same place. And then this Helltide Fred meter spawns monsters, and then that fills everyone else's Fred meter, and then they spawn, spawn monsters, and you can kind of like do an infinite loop of monster spawns for like the entire Helltide. Um, we'll see how this will play out exactly, if that was addressed in any way, but that was something that was possible on the PDR. We'll see. Yeah, and that also, well, covers all the notes here that I have actually. So, is there anything else that I missed here? Uh, from chat, maybe. Otherwise, I guess this is a little summary here. As I said, I will go through the patch notes. Um, I'm doing this now basically on stream, but not for this video. But I will like, skim through this and like, go through every line and, and see if there's anything that we missed, anything important. And of course, there's going to be a lot of builds, a lot of guides and so on that we'll be putting out in the next two weeks until launch. Launch is on the 14th of May and um, it's looking really good. So I'm very excited for this. Uh, even probably playing a rogue, uh, being the worst class, I think it will be very fun. And um, yeah, in general, I guess we'll see how the exact balance will turn out. But yeah, like druids definitely have very powerful builds. Uh, Barbs have very powerful builds. So those are like the number one and two, I would say. And it doesn't seem like they've had rest flame shield and perma flame shield, really. But we'll see. As I said, there's a lot of like potentially hidden changes in there that we'll only see when the patch goes live, especially in tempering mods. Um, there were, for example, temper mods that gave you increased flame shield duration. I kind of expect them to just not exist anymore, for example, or at least heavily nerfed and these kind of things. So I guess there were a lot of tweaks that are not in the patch notes. So uh, the predictions that we can make are only going so far, really. Otherwise, yeah, hope you enjoyed this little summary and uh, stay tuned for more stuff. And I'll see you guys next time.